Hey, Dave from Head Games here, and today we're gonna go over the pocket port R, and we're gonna go over the oil hole for putting this thing on a 2JZ, and we're gonna digitize it, we're gonna CNC it, we're gonna weld it, we're gonna we're gonna do a lot of stuff on the 1JZ, so keep watching. I'm not gonna show the process today, but I want to just touch on this oil hole right here. So this oil hole feeds the cylinder head, the top of the cylinder head with oil. This customer brought up how guys do a swap. So this is a 2JZ head gasket, and this is the oil hole right here. And the oil hole doesn't match this oil hole. So basically we have to move this oil hole this way. We have to move it down or make this a better path. And that's gonna be for the next video. We're gonna show how we do it. We're gonna figure out how to make this hole fit the 2JZ gasket so there is no oil issues. Hey guys, Dave from Hit Games here. And I just want to say that I don't normally start off a video with an apology, but I feel like I owe you this one because, well, it might get a little confusing. I hope it doesn't, but if it does, comment below. I, I really want to hear it, but I, I renamed my SSD, and I think in the process of renaming an SSD, I lost some footage of this video, and I didn't want to not put it up. I think it was too cool not to put it up, uh, although it's missing some information. What it's missing is Matt welding up the cylinder head for a oil hole. Uh, I showed the machining and I have all that stuff and I don't have the finished product because all that was in that SSD that I renamed and unfortunately uh, that sucks. I failed as a provider of information, but in this episode, what we're gonna do is we're gonna machine the head for the oil hole. We are going to valve job it. We're gonna go over some parts and we're gonna show you the finished product. We're gonna flow test it. The whole nine yards is the Head Games Pocket Port R. So Matt had to weld this whole area up and what we had to do is move this hole over. This is an oil feed line for the cylinder head from Toyota. And then when you go to a 2JZ gasket, you're basically moving the gasket to the hole this way. And that's what I showed in the beginning. You guys can rewind it and check it out. But that is what we were doing and I lost the footage of him welding this up and me showing that part. Uh, but now you're gonna get to see the machining. Now that that's machined, Matt's gonna throw this thing in the CNC and we're gonna digitize the pocket port R.
The problem with the Jay-Z's is when you put a decent cam in it, this area here, this bucket area, gets very close to the camshaft lobe. And what you have to do is you machine this area right here and you make it, say, come back here, come back, lower this here, and then it doesn't get so close. Now, most cams don't hit, but what they do is they get so close that it can actually whisk oil away from the camshaft and it strikes the bucket dry. And that is part of the reason why you see bucket failures, especially with them billet cams, you need to make sure that you have ample oil supply. Lubrication is happiness. What is the Pocket Put R? Well, that is a name that we came up with for our Pocket Port, which is putting the area underneath the valve seat and the short side radius, which is the most crucial area of any cylinder head. The most gains are found here. They're not really found in the port, well, sometimes they are, but it's definitely the biggest gain is gonna be from your valve job and your Pocket Port, and that is why we go to that area there. This is also a pocket per R, the R stands for combustion chamber. And usually we do that on race applications, or in this case, street applications that dictate that we need the combustion chamber to match the bore size of the engine that's going on. And that's what we have here. The 1JZ had a smaller combustion chamber. So we made it into a larger combustion chamber, made it to the same size as the bore on a 2JZ, what this is gonna do is gonna make it more knock resistant. And that is because there's not gonna be so much overhang that is gonna make it so it will detonate and have a lot of heat in the chamber. So we make the chamber, we resize it to the right diameter. This is also gonna make it so you can run more timing and less boost. And that is so you can create less heat, you lower the EGTs, and now you have something that has a lot of cushion for the push-in and now we can pull more power into it. And this is especially important for you pump gas guys who are trying to push it a little bit farther than you should on pump gas. Now you have a solution. So let me interrupt real quick and just say that we don't use radius valve jobs because radius valve jobs don't work in reality. Radius valve jobs work in theory because people think that because you are, uh, you're trying to get air out of the cylinder that you want it to be the smoothest as possible. And that's why a lot of people sand their cylinder heads. You're going to sand it because you think that that is what's going to make it the air move better. But that theory doesn't actually work in the valve job section. In the valve job, it will flow better on the flow bench, but it doesn't work better on the car. And I don't wanna get into theories here, but there is reasons why this is uh, a thing. And I know from experience that I don't wanna hurt it by putting a radius on it. And we stopped using radiuses many, many, many years ago from learning this. Also, five angle valve jobs. A lot of people think that a five angle valve job is the industry standard for what's badass, but it's actually not because in a lot of cylinder heads, the valve seat's just not wide enough to put a five angle on it and it not be a radius. What did I say, say about radiuses? We don't want them. Either way, we're talking about something that could flow better, but not work better. And what we're really trying to be concerned about is how it's gonna fill the cylinder, which is something that the throat and the valve job, most important two areas of any cylinder head on the planet that is what you want to get into. So the biggest takeaway from this is for you guys to know that not all valve jobs are created equal. And just because somebody puts a valve job on it, you can actually hurt it and you don't know it. And you won't even be asking for it and you don't know it. 
So it's best to go with ones that know. Here is the valve job. You'll see one, two, three, four angles. So it has a top cut. Here is the 45 degree angle. And this is what the valve seals on. Then you have your second bottom cut, or you have your bottom cut and you have your second bottom cut, which goes into the throat. And that is a four angle valve job. And this will actually outwork a five angle valve job any day of the week. All right, now we're ready to go on the flow bench. We're gonna validate our gains. The head has been CNC'd. We did the pocket for R and we did a valve job guide. So whole nine yards. And this is the last step before mill, clean and assembly. We did the exhaust, let's flip it over and do the intake. Let's go over the numbers and then we're gonna go over the parts. All right, y'all ready for some numbers? Toby's gonna put them up here somewhere. I'll stand out of the way and read off my piece of paper because I'm not gonna remember all this stuff. All right, head games, pocket port R versus the OEM 1JZ cylinder head. Now the pocket port R is also flow tested with a super tech intake and exhaust valve OEM size, just a, Make sure that we're on the same page with that. And the gains are on the intake first. We are at eight CFM up on the 100 lift, four CFM at 150 lift. I don't know what happened there. 13 at two, 29 at 250, 31 at 300 lift, 26 at 350 lift, and at 400 lift, we are at 24 CFM up. Now, know that the gains, you'll see how it kind of goes up and it goes down. And sometimes that is just, it needs a little bit more from the port. And well, it doesn't have it because it's just a pocket port. And, but it kind of goes along with what we've seen that even the OEM, the head just doesn't do much after 300 lift and guys are not gonna put more than 400 lift in, at least you shouldn't be. So there you go. I floated up to 400 lift because I felt like that is pretty much where you're gonna be. 10 millimeter lift, 400 lift, that's it. All right, so here's the exhaust. On the exhaust, we are a gain of five CFM at 100 lift, 15 CFM at 150, 14 CFM at 200, 21 CFM at 250, 300 lift or 17 CFM up, 17 at 350, and 15 at four. So the exhaust didn't pick up as much as the intake, but I kind of expected that because, well, the port just kind of sucks. And uh, there's not much we can do about the port, but it's still a gain over the OEM Absolutely. Now the, the valve itself is a gain, the pocket port's a gain, the valve job's a gain. All of it makes for a better cylinder head that's gonna fill the cylinder. It's gonna light that turbo up faster. And it's probably what most people pick up fully porting the cylinder head. All right, now we're ready to ship. We got our super tech valves in here. Combustion chamber is all completed. It is milled, ready to rock and roll. We have stock size, super tech intake and exhaust. GSC 5066 spring kit with your titanium retainer. We have a manly valve lock and this thing is ready for boosted beatings.
All right, so that's going to do it for us today on this one Jay-Z. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below because we have more in store for you on this platform in the next couple months. So be sure to look out for it. Toodles.